it seems like stand-up comedy is only just beginning to become popular in Mexico. Why, why do you think that is? It is. I think it's a very weird phenomenon because comedy in Mexico has been um, kind of like, how do you say it in English? Everything has been our TV or theater, but it's all slapstick or it's uh, albur, is what we call it in, in Mexico, which is like kind of like a second, like a different meaning when you say something and you mean something else and it's <coughs> sexual. And that's what comedy has been like in Mexico for years. And nobody really wanted to change it. And I think the boom in the internet, like eight years ago, more or less, opened up a lot of things that we didn't know about. I mean, I knew about stand-up a lot when I was young because I had like, kind of like an American school um, thing and I had, and I traveled and I watched a lot of things and my dad showed me, but, but people didn't really know about stand-up. And when the internet boomed, we start. We could see on YouTube videos stand up, and we just. I, w I went to New York and saw it live, and that kind of started to come into Mexico. And I decided that I wanted to do that kind of comedy because I was. I didn't like the comedy in Mexico. It's not my style. So I said, "What? Why don't I do the style that I want to see?" And everybody told me I was crazy because nobody really knows stand up, and nobody's going to understand it. And it doesn't exist in Mexico. And I said, "Well, if it doesn't exist, you don't know if it doesn't work." So I started doing it. Yeah. And it worked a lot and very fast. In eight years, it's grown exponentially, and it's amazing. And who are some of your comedy heroes or influences? Um, Eddie Izzard is my favorite comedian ever. I think it's brilliant. But the first ones that I saw was what Bill Cosby when we didn't know he was who he is. And um, I watched a lot of, I, I watched, it's not stand-up, but it's comedy. I watched this Cuban radio show that my dad put, put me on when I was on, when I was small. It's called La Tremenda Corte. And I, I, I heard that a lot. It's a very intelligent kind of comedy. So that's what made me kind of want to do it this way. So. In your experience, what are some of the biggest challenges that you faced in the entertainment industry? Uh, when I was starting, I didn't have really... A connection with any of the of the big television networks, so I couldn't be noticed other than by the internet, by my social media. So that was the first thing that I think I I could bumped into. Like you can't be anybody here if you don't don't go on television. But I didn't want to because I didn't like the the content that was in television in Mexican television. So that was the first bump. And then when YouTube and Netflix and all of that started to happen. Then that was a boom. That was a like the, the television, the big television networks got pretty scared because they were like, okay, they don't need us anymore. So now what are we gonna do? So that was the first time I started to struggle. And then the second time, everybody asks me if I if, if being a woman in comedy in Mexico is hard, or if if it's a something that I struggled with, and I find it the opposite because. As a woman, I can say a lot of other things that men can't say and nobody can get mad at me, so that's good. And also, um, when I start my comedy, everybody forgets that I'm a woman and starts to think that I'm a comedian. Because I don't talk about everything about that, that women talk about in comedy, like my period and every, everybody I had sex with, and I don't really like my comedy to be that way. So I've, I've tried that my comedy be as universal as it can be and as gender free as it can be. You've been a, a critic of Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. I you had the, the opportunity to meet him last year at an event. Did that change your perception of him at all? It was very weird because I I had this negative perception as the whole country has. And then I met him and I realized he's a very charismatic guy and I understood why he was where he is. But then I realized also that I didn't really respect him as a president. I just, it's kind of like the guy that you think it's very cool to hang out with at a party because he's fun, but you would never trust him with any of your money. So um, I, I just didn't respect him in another way. It did change my perception, but it just enlightened, enlightened me that, yeah, we don't have a great president and he's just there as a mannequin. That's what I thought about him when I, when I met him, which is very sad. And when I did a YouTube video and it went viral and it, and it helped also my career, 
I said at the end of the video, I don't want to live in a country where I don't want to meet my president. I'm not honored to meet my president. And I think that's how everybody feels, and that's what I felt when I met him. And if you had a similar opportunity to meet Donald Trump, what would you say to him? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it would be very weird because everybody hates him, but I, at the moment that you are face to face with him, that, that's what happened with, with Peña Nieto also. Everybody told me, you should have killed him, you should have said something worse, you should have, but when you're there, in the end, it, he is a president, and Donald Trump is a president of the United States. You, you just can't go face him and slap him, even if you want to. But I think what I would say to him is just step down, just, just quit. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about your work with uh, Ray and Serta in, in female prisons. What exactly have you been doing and how did you get involved in that? Uh, my cousin, that I, I didn't meet her till like two years ago, a year ago, because we didn't really grow up together. She's like my fifth cousin or something like that. My, my dad is uh, her dad's cousin, so I don't know what that means us, but we are, we are related. So I met her and I knew she was working for something in prison but I didn't really know what and she called me and she said we need uh, to do a show so we can raise funds for playing set at a stand-up show would you help us and I was like yeah of course but I think I would love to do something else and not just raise money so I told her we should do a stand-up workshop in jail with women because I think stand-up is really cathartic and it helps you it's like a it's a psychological tool, and it has helped me do a lot of catharsis with a lot of things in my life. And I think the women in prison don't have a lot of tools to handle a lot of emotional things. And I think stand-up is something that can help with. And finally, how do you think Mexican society would benefit from having more humane conditions in its prisons? I think a prison uh, is should work as a place where people can can change and they can go outside and not be the same person that, they, that brought them in there. So for Mexico, it's like there, there's, the I don't know how you say it in English, but when people, people come back like 70% of the time, which is huge. So I think Mexico would benefit if people inside a prison could really rehabilitate and go outside and not do drugs and not, and not be killers and not be whatever. It would be better for society because, as a whole, it's more positive. But people are really—they don't even really care about the stories there that are, are the people inside of prison. They don't really care about forgiving them or giving them a second chance. And the people inside know that. So whenever they go back out, they don't care to be the same person because they know that people don't really care to give them a second chance. So it's a really negative cycle in which the country is just going to go in a deeper hole. But if it's more positive, I think to live in a society where second chances are the priority, it changes the whole perspective of everything. The first time I went into, into jail, you always think, what did she do? What did she do? What did she do? And I didn't really think anything negative of them. I just thought it's horrible that their reality and the context they grew up in brought them. I don't think they're bad people. I just think they're people that have a low conscious um, state, and that can be changed. And the things that happen inside the prison happen outside a hundred times worse. The prison is just a little Mexico. And every time I go in there, I'm like, this country has a lot to change, and it has to change fast. So. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us, and best oh, of luck with all your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.